Hello my friends and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to start to work on this gorgeous gorgeous image by Riolis. And I love these flowers. They are so beautiful. Here is what I have so far. Uh, what I did, I found the center. This is very long long panel. Go all the way. If I can maybe even lift my camera all the way up so this is just a half of the panel it's folded in half up there and I put the pins to kind of make me center well probably better if I explain it to you on this one so this is the full panel so I fold it on half and then I fold it on half one more time I found my center so that center is my very top pin up there. So I measure by 20s. So it's not like 10, 10, 10 squares, but I did 20, so it's kind of faster. And here is my bottom part of the bottom would be like right in here. Now I measure by five, not by five, sorry, by 10. Here is by 20s uh, cross stitching. Here is by 10 because I need this way only uh, 50 squares. If I can show you, for example, on this pattern, here is my center. So I need the one, two, three, four, five. And same thing on this side. So I need the 50 stitches on each side. So this is what I measure. And I decided that I want to start, like in my previous video, when I was did cross stitches, I thought I might gonna start in the middle so I can do flowers, but I don't like to do in the middle because then I have to count back. It will be different stitching for me. I always like to stitch from the bottom corner, so I will start my stitching from this leaf and obviously on the point of this leaf. And I will be, this is my one, two pins, if I can put them more under. This is my 50, this is my 50 squares, okay, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And the way this leaf, I'm going to show you on a paper the way this in here you see how this leaf is higher than this one so it's like one two three four it will start on my 40 not on 50 and then I have to count this is actually not 10 only eight in here so one full and then on the next one so I will have to probably grid because this pattern is colorful, <clears throat> it will be probably easy to mistake um, by the coloring. And I don't really want to color with black marker, like um, mark what I stitched already. So I have this idea that will bring me to my next kind of episode of doing it. But first I want to show you. We do have a different stitching. I thought I will start stitching from this this symbol, but this is already bland actually, and that's a lot. So that's the, my first leaf that I want to work on it. All this symbol like uh, look like a V. It's the bland, and here is this bland. So. Uh, we have a different stitching in here than I used to kind of do it. So what in here, um, what I need to do. There is a two and one. So I will need two threads of number nine, which this one color. And eight number, which is... Where is my eight one? Seven, eight. So this is the eight number. Interesting. Well, let's let's do this. Yeah. Okay. So so I will need a number nine of threads. 
two and number eight just the one and I have this explained in the instruction these stitches need to be pointed out with the two threads they pointed out to like to one position for example from left to right you do in a half stitch and then with one thread you do in a other half stitch on a top to create your full cross and that's how blends work in this um, pattern so that's kind of you know a little bit complicated but what I see in here those blends like for example in here you see in here it says 4 plus 3 so I have here, here is the 4, here is the 3, so I have to pick from these colors and um, where my threads. But in here, 9 and 8, I have a 9, but I don't have a separate 8, so where is it? Or for example, 10 and 11, I have 11, but I don't have 10, so... I have to check later what is going on on my thread so we will get back to this one because I think that's what I'm gonna start with or also in here technique that we need to use only one thread and we might gonna even start from a because in here those black triangles that's the one that we have to do just in one thread right in here one thread right there so this is the number of the thread and and then uh, how many threads you need which is one so full stitch in one thread so this is only two techniques in here I did not see any like uh, French knots or something like that so it's only um, two thread stitch one thread stitch and blend which is go half stitch and two threads and one stitch in the other half so that's what I was uh, seeing in the flowers when I look on this picture okay and you can tell in here for example on this pink one that it's a uh, darker pink stitch in two threads this way and then light bra uh, light pink stitch in one thread the other way um, if we can look on the greens let's see what is the greens in here okay here on the greens we can see blends it's uh, right in here darker on the bottom and lighter on the top in one thread but you have to make sure to remember to put always threads in the same position so when you're um, I'm always do my first stitching from the left corner to the right so this is gonna be like my two blends two threads blends will go always to the right corner fixing uh, facing it and the other lighter one with the one thread always will be go on the top to make a full stitch so I have to remember about that um, and now I'm gonna show you my other trick what I want to talk to you about the black uh, black canvas this is black Ada 14 count and to help you to count because this is black eyes can go crazy a little bit and um, you know for example what we can do it's a magic of our oopsie light pad you see that and that's what I told you about we're gonna have a help from the light um, like to help you have to work sometimes you can put a white piece of paper under but when I try it didn't work very well so this is the only way if you're gonna stitch it's good to have behind a light pad and you can see all the crosses 
like the holes and if we turn it off look at how dark that is so definitely light pad will help you and if you're doing a diamond painting you probably already have a light pad as well so that's how I use my light pad to count my uh, stitching this way and this way because it's nice and bright now I will grid my canvas what I gonna do for that for example when I use my sorry if I talk too much maybe but I like to explain as much as possible if you are a beginner for example on this cross stitching I did my grid with light blue color pencil and I'm gonna show you one more time pencil which one I use let's see here it is unique creative wash out marker okay so this one I got from Walmart I I remember I do have some white pencil that I could mark on white on a black canvas but I'm not going to I have a better way so here is my tip for you to use a fishing line I will do my grids on a canvas with fishing light I will see them on a black color very well and also when I'm gonna stitch I will not poke fishing line with my needle because it will go or one way or another it's not gonna go through the fishing line so on the end when I finish cross stitching I easy just pull out from my canvas and that's it and I don't need to pre-mark with marker uh, white marker for example and for in case what happen if that marker will not wash out right so I saw this tip on somebody else youtubers what they do like this and I thought well this is a very nice and great technique to use fishing line so this is what I'm gonna do I'm gonna stitch a little bit and then come back to you and show you how the look like and I just got mm, this is the thinnest one that I found I, I use also this fishing line for my bead um, for beading so this is the same one maybe six pound I don't know um, I don't have any more the paper where used to be right down in here what kind of um, thickness that is that but whatever you have the thinnest it doesn't matter just you still gonna see it you see so I will show you shortly I'm just gonna count off the camera and show you how they look like here is a little bit update on what I'm doing here I have in here I thread my needle into the fishing line but I did not cut from the bobbin so I'm just gonna put this like on the side in here and what I'm doing I'm zigzagging by counting you really need to count just um, maybe once this way and then you have to count since we already count in here but I count here by 20 stitches I need to separate them by 10 but my first squares in here will be it's a um, I have a eight stitches in here and the rest of will be by 10 because that's the way pattern goes so what I'm doing I'm zigzagging this way and every time I go I'm gonna show you in here for example when I get this crisscross I leave it like I stitch my needle around this and this square so it's a corner right so I'm just would stitch in here so in here you would see two hold on let me see if I can zoom a little bit more close so I have always have my main thread of this um, fishing line go on the top and only under under those two stitches where it's gonna be crisscross my lines okay so when I gonna do my lines this way they will go right between those two again so that will separate my squares horizontal and vertical 
So how I do? I do on a zigzag and I keep my I keep my wires, not wires, I keep my fishing line in here on the side and then I go this way and then I'm gonna leave a little bit kind of like a loop in here so I can pull thread as much as I need okay this way then I go up don't not gonna pull all the way still gonna leave a little bit and now I'm gonna do the same thing from this side so I don't need to cut my uh, my fishing line it's always gonna be go in this motion till I finish till I finish my thread all the way to the top and then maybe I'm gonna start new one and do the other way so I'm just keep pulling and pulling and leave a little bit on each side so I don't have to cut all the time because it's not easy to connect them together um, so I'm just gonna zigzag it zigzag it till I get I think to my middle point where I started my count and here's the center of my design so I will finish uh, by this point and I will do my zigzagging this way and then I will stitch and everything is gonna be separated by the little squares um, yeah it's take a time to do that but I think since when I prepare this, especially it's a black canvas, so I just want to be ready and start stitching and I don't have to later, uh, you know, have a mistake this way. It's going to show me exactly squares where I need to go. And after I done, it's just easy to snip one side and you just pull out fishing line. And that's it. Toss in the garbage or reuse it if you want to. So this is what I'm gonna do. That's a lots of to go, and I'm just leave this one as a center for me to now kind of keep it because some pins, as I see here, is coming out because I didn't put them in two stitch, just like a one. So uh, I might just gonna do right now one line in here center to before I lose all my pins. But all I wanted is to start my beginning, so this is gonna be my starting point in here. All right, I will see you a little bit later when I have some more progress in here and show you how they look like. Here is so far how this look like. So this is the half of the canvas in here. And as you can see, I zigzag from horizontal lines. Uh, you don't have to really zigzag. You can just uh, cut, like cut in here and leave a longer, which that's what I'm doing right now vertical if I look in here see I just cut a little bit of the threads and here is the starting point so I can like a wave in a little bit lower and I like cut my fishing line and now I have already working on a second line and with the light pad it's really easy to do uh, all you have to do is do your right counting when you do your first line on here without light you can see better uh, you, like horizontally or vertical which line you want to do first that's what you need to count make sure you have a square of 10 uh, cross stitching uh, point and then when I do right now vertical I just go between those uh, you see like between those fishing line and I have four if we, we can count four cross kind of like in the middle so I just go between them and make sure I do in one line stay and with the light pad you can see very well the lines where you have to follow so I will do just uh, one half, like for example this half where I'm going to start my cross stitching and the other half in here I will do later. Um, yeah, so that's it. I'm going to start my cross stitching as soon as I finish this line just to see how it's going to go. If I like this way, but I think, you know, 
this is something different it's definitely take a time longer than you would do maybe with white pencil marker uh, to do those points but hey I don't mind it's not like I'm doing much in here so I'm just gonna play here around and that's it that's all I'm doing for today I'm back just to show you update because vertical lines was so easy to do that I decided to do both sides at the same time uh, originally I wanted to do just like a halfway this way but because it's all count there was no problem I left a little bit tails of the string in here my fishing line and it was just easy to go crisscross crisscross because all horizontal lines was count properly so yeah that's it we are ready to do our first cross stitching I think I'm just gonna kind of remind myself what I recorded in my first episode so if I repeat myself please forgive me uh, I did finish my grids on a canvas and in this clip of the video I will share with you something very interesting something that I discovered for myself I can use for my cross stitching and just uh, remind you I do keep my stuff in this Walmart bins and by the way I am shopping <laughs> at fun sale yes um, I'm gonna show you my setup my tools in here everything I need for stitching now well please those ladies who adore my nails please forgive me because I have no nails I have uh, tear them apart and I have to make them so I will try to use this cute chopstick to point it out so as I mentioned before uh, I saw somebody were doing a grid with the fishing line but they did a little bit differently um, and of course you have to find your way the way you like it so what I did I used just one string of the thing wave 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 and then I did vertical waves and I end up lose them like here is my grid starting I stitch few stitches back down and just left the string hanging down later I can move them out and restitch to my top part of the canvas because I did only half and this is long long panel of those flowers from Riolis now my tip for you that is absolutely I think a genius what I find out for myself I'm gonna show you my setup hold on let me just move out backwards you see what's going on in here maybe this way light gonna be better um, let me move my magnifying glass down and turn some light on it okay so this is my setup and look at this I use old picture frame which I need to pull out those pins because once upon a time I wanted to do uh, put some diamond painting in it so I was kind of keeping those staples but I'm gonna pull them out and what I did I put my canvas on it like this okay this is big frame but also this is very long canvas and I just wrap here around put parchment paper just for in case so no residue left from the pens and I use those big from the staple I think from a staple could be from Walmart I'm not sure so I put two of them in here you can make uh, like um, more often depends on the size of your canvas and then I did same thing to the top frame so on the back let me flip this move my lamp away so I don't I need a light okay but if I flip here is from the top I flip and because there's a 
lots of fabric in here as you can tell so I kind of like I fold that fabric and pin with the same pin uh, that hold in my front um, now this is how canvas marks looks on the back and this is the front okay so you can see better all the squares that you need to stitch and easy for you to follow now do you see what I did in here if you are diamond painter you have tons of this and this was like one alone one that I cut in half and this one I believe from dreamer design because they do have a hole inside uh, some of them doesn't have a hole if you have a thinner because there's a different sizes sometimes uh, come with diamond painting I cut just uh, one side like this all the way to the hole and it go perfect I can show you it from this side you know how those uh, grids in here on the frame go perfect all the way to the hole in a tube kind of like a hug in a frame and stay in it so now this is can be your parking method holder for your needles uh, you can put this on the side obviously I'm not gonna use this on the side because I'm right-handed so when I stitch my hand go like to the right and back to the right and back mm, but you can do uh, put this hold on, I'm just trying to put my needle you can put this even on the bottom in here and then roll your canvas on the top of that for the smooth edges but I don't think there's anything happen to the canvas in here or you can put this one onto the top and then use as your parking for your um, needles now the other thing I see um, lots of girls using it's a uh, pool noodles that you can buy from dollar store some of them those huge one but also they have a medium size and they are smooth like this on the top sometimes they could be like a wiggle grids, but uh, the other one I would say maybe like around kind of like this round circle. So it would be perfect to hug your frame even like overlap and turn around if you want a whole bunch of needles stick on it and you can just put like right on the top of your frame right there. And I said I'm gonna use my chopstick to show you like right up there up and you just put a whole bunch of um, needles if you do parking techniques now this frame is huge obviously you can buy a dollar store smaller frame just toss a glass well don't toss it maybe you will use it one day to frame some picture but you can use anything you know frame like this you can even make uh, this two by two square and just um, I, I still want to find those big uh, clamps that sometimes you can buy in um, wood uh, warehouse to clamp the wood when you glue something like a furniture uh, but this is this is work for me that's good enough like I have in here one in here one you can open up them pretty much wide to clamp to the thicker uh, frame uh, and you can use also you if you don't want to hang in here because I just don't have too many of them those clips but you can use like threads stitch in here and just wrap around like restitch around your frame uh, for the more uh, like a drum quality but as you can tell it's it's wiggle because I didn't put this is just a test and I do love it as you can see I already put a couple of stitches in here as well so I like it it worked perfect now the other thing I I told you I will share how to work with black canvas <clears throat> if we look through my magnifying glass okay I'm gonna zoom okay like this and it's black but you can see <coughs> excuse me you can see well but also 
here is my computer desk. This is the keyboard that I push all the way up there. And here is my light pad for diamond painting. So if we turn one, two, three, and I'm gonna turn off light from my magnifying glass. And I'm gonna move my picture over the table and boom look how easy it would be to stitch no problem now let me show you without without light pad you see but it's dark and kind of because the camera now is zooming right into the stitches but it will be difficult to see but also uh, somebody suggested you can use like a white paper for example this board is white and if you look in it through the light from the top light right to do like this so with the board up there it's no light right now just watch I'm gonna show you through my magnifying glass if I pull out it's kind of like a darker but you can see holes kind of if I put back white paper in here maybe will help you but I find that if I turn off even with magnifying uh, light on but if I turn off it's really dark if I would uh, stitch just through the magnifying glass and the light pad boom three seconds and it just amazing how clear you can see to stitch you see what I'm saying so this is very good tip I'm really happy that it's work and what I want to say to you ladies the computer desk is the best purchase could be for your crafting needs <laughs> if you don't have a computer just go and buy computer desk because look how awesome this extension is from computer put your light pad in here lift up and uh, because of the frame is big it sits nicely on your desk and also remember those mats that i bought florin you can simply do your parking boom just right in here you see what i mean and this is actually very comfortable for me to diamond paint on it it's soft it doesn't hurt my wrist as much so i really like this and i suggest for somebody who have a uh, wrist problem like or the panel whatever how you call that but this one techniques with the light pad over the black canvas looks awesome and I am going to start my stitching and as you can see I already put my first stitching and I decided to do from let me show you a little bit of my pattern so this is the bottom so I decided to work a little bit differently and I started from this color this triangle and this is one threads only uh, uh, initially I wanted to start from this symbol because it's lots of them but this is blend so I started from from here this is my center that pre-marked already right so I started on this triangle and this is three lines that I made so far right up there and I need to do this in one thread only uh, there's only two colors I uh, know one two three colors in one thread rest of is two threads and some blends in three well different kind of thread spray so I like that and the needle that came with this um, um, it's thick and that's what you need for this kind of um, let me pull it out in here for this kind of cotton uh, threads is better to have thicker needle like this because and it's good to have in one stitch only like one and then from the other side do another one so the thread that way not gonna rub out too like not rub off too much if you do in two stitches at once that would be like too much pressure on a threads um, from the ada sharp edges 
it will break apart uh, easily so with this kind of threads if it's not DMC it's good to do in one stitch and go from the other so the threads go more freely through those holes and the needle of course a little bit thicker so make a more um, bigger passage for the thread go in and not get fluffy because this is a very nice and nice thread so that's my beginning and I think we should stitch together a little bit if you're just gonna ignore my nails I will do stitching because I'm kind of embarrassed to continue my video with such a bad nails but I just couldn't wait to share with you this this thing that I just invented that's it I'm not buying any frame also go to the garage sales in the summer if you are Canada US we do have a garage sales and people lots of people selling just uh, like uh, empty frames uh, in Canada we have a website called Kijiji people giving away for free a whole bunch of picture frames because they don't need it so if you go on the website you can find a whole bunch of frames for free for your diamond paint and canvases all right so now I'm gonna prepare myself in here sit down and we can stitch a little bit together as of right now I don't mark with markers on my original uh, this paper but I think I will do a copy on my printer that way I can mark it up and still have this nice and beautiful so we are right now right in this point you can see uh, right in here so I will try it. okay I will keep in here on the side and hopefully I'm not gonna mistake and I will see what I'm doing I'm just gonna put something in here to keep my pattern down maybe my magnet I got this cute little magnet from a dollar store so on this side magnet it's good to put needles on it so right now I'm just gonna put right to my canvas where my stitches go so I kinda have my point where I am working so we will do three stitches down okay so hopefully you will see what I'm doing I'm gonna put my keyboard a little bit backwards and I do use my light from magnifying lamp because as of right now because I'm recording I'm a little bit in a, not in a comfortable position so I need to have my magnifying now you see this lines in here right of the fishing line so that's exactly like between where those holes so I'm kind of like I'm moving a little bit with my needle and go right next to it and the good thing about fishing line that you cannot stab it with your thread and you're not gonna like split if this would be marked only with the okay only with the regular threads so that way it will be very easy to pull out when you finish stitch so right now I'm doing it with one hand kinda uh, usually if I do without if I would without recording here's how I do let me try to get my hands around the tripod kinda like I would pull it together like in here by holding them tension in here and now I have to do my back to make a full stitch and also with the same I kind of like a hold in my canvas to make a better pressure so I can see where my needle would come out also I can go like my hand in here under the canvas to to pull thread make sure it's not like tangle you can keep a one hand like right now you can see shadow my hand one is under 
and I will make sure it goes smoothly on my hand under here and kind of feel it. You will feel it if you have a knot or not. So you don't make a knot accidentally. Okay. Let me see. I'm just gonna go from the end of this point on the other side of my and here. Let me just count one, two, three down. Okay. Three more stitches down. And I need my very visible like right now you're not horizontal if I lift my frame you would see that those holes with the light pad is helping so much it's so much better now and what I say you can do from up to the left from left to the right now when you have a frame you don't have to kind of worry about which one way you're gonna go because there's a always you just have to make sure your lines go in one direction the first one if I do in two stitches at once that would kind of complicated have to um, have to okay see because I'm like close to this fishing line, kind of sometimes tricky to go under. So I will go from the other side from here and I can do stitch the other way from here and just kind of like a push uh, this fishing line aside a little bit. But my cross still going to be in the right direction. And then we go, when we go out of this line, so it will be much easier easier later so I will uh, readjust my canvas a little bit later to a smaller frame I think this is just a trial and I see that it's work it will be wonderful if you have like this huge canvases and you can just stretch on this big frame all at once and I will switch this one because it's not very uh, wide this way, right? It's very narrow. So I will find, I have lots of frames. Uh, I will find um, a different frame, a little bit smaller. So it would be easier for, for me to, um, you know, just um, even storage to put away stuff like that. So I'm just glad that the frame idea is working. And I wanted to do this for a long time. And just, uh, I don't know what was holding me. I thought I still going to find a nice fancy one from the store that's looking professional. You know, I just wanted to have something good for my channel that will be look beautiful. But since I have two times, I bought this hoop holder went so bad which I do have a video about it if you didn't see it that was just didn't work it was disaster so I think this way it's a kind of like a DIY use what you have at home and don't regret because it this looks very comfortable actually okay let me see, uh, one over, okay, we have uh, one more stitch on this side, so in here, in this point, my fishing threads go crisscross and between them four stitches kind of will be so I don't do like over like if I do one cross I try to be like 
under the fishing line so I don't have to crisscross with my stitch so my uh, fishing line always will be open and not over stitch if uh, you know what I mean okay so we need one more over and I have to find a this or oh, this one might be I gonna over stitch because it's kind of on my way from this side to stitch there so one and then we're gonna miss one and go two over gonna continue slow this way but I think for the purpose of the video uh, you can see that way better not as much my fingers on the way right but because I uh, connected my canvas only you know from the bottom and the top and I don't have in here on the side so the fabric in here still loose so if you like to do in two way stitches you just kind of like a push in here with your finger and you still can do let me show you you do in two in two stitches like this if I can see you still can do it kind of not even with your finger would be comfortable like with a little bit more sharp maybe like your nail so uh, the canvas kind of pushed out and let me see but as I say before this threads better to do in one stitch because this is very kind of fluffy so I'm just gonna continue like this up and down up and down and off the camera I can use my two hands so it's more kind of faster let me let me try it let me try if I can do with two hands so I'm gonna go here and if I pull with this hand up and then I go oh my god it's so not comfortable no I cannot do with my left hand no way no way my brother just do this one do slowly and this fluff constantly picking from my puppy unfortunately because I'm sitting right now in my house coat and I have some fur from my baby So what do you think about this technique and this tips in this video? Tell me if you learned something new. I would love to know. I was really, really excited about this video like a kid. And I'm just like, oh, well, you have to forgive me for my nails. But I cannot wait till I do my nails because sometimes it takes me a long time to do my own gel nails especially when it's time to do my right hand with left hand and my left hand are so not workable all right so what we have up there what do you think so far of this stitches let me see what's next we have in here one two three and a fourth so uh, I need to go one two three and in here let's see so there and now because I have a grid with my fishing line I don't have to count how many stitches I need all I know that for example let me show you 
on the pattern and then here grab my needle okay so we are working in this part in here so now I'm gonna go in here see like a one two three and a fourth so I'm just go like this and do this one and I'm just gonna go till I go over fishing line one more time and that's how easy when you grid all those little squares then you know where you're going and just like go to the fishing line and make it one more over so that's how it is so let me create a little bit more progress in here by myself and I will get to you when we will see a little bit more shape and maybe um, uh, let me see let me see here because I really need to be careful to count in here so maybe when I get to the part that like big patch in here so I don't afraid to mistake and it will be more freely for me to stitch this big part and then we're gonna stitch together a little bit more since you are still here here is what I come up with I found old frame picture there was um I mean probably the picture more than 100 years old there was some people um, in that picture that obviously dead long time ago and I don't know them so I got the frame out there and I put now on each side my rollers from diamond painting and here's what I'm thinking let me try if this is gonna be work better because now this is going to be smaller smaller canvas so let's try together and see how they're gonna work maybe definitely should work better because big frame take lots of space if this would be like huge and white picture that would be good but for what I need I'm thinking this way looks like it's gonna cover all the way so what I'm thinking here I'm gonna flip this on another side like this and what I'm planning is to connect these two together in here kind of like let's see if I can do can you see it or not and somehow pinch in here together these two canvases with the you know pinch them together so they can stay somehow like this and this is going to be like on a smaller Oh uh, no, it doesn't gonna work like this because I need to have an empty space in here. Okay, I have to figure out the other way I have to connect this. We'll be right back and show you what I come up with. I changed a little bit. Didn't work exactly um, for the roll in here because my canvas is really short on this side. So I couldn't kind of roll it. So here is what I did. I roll on a frame from the top without foam roller and just pinch by putting parchment paper in here. Uh, then I did uh, tension on side and here where I already stitching. I just need to find one more of this pin to go on this side. But for the top I left, yes, how can I show you top? For the top I left my first roller on the top of the frame and then I roll my other roll the excess of all the fabric that it's too long. So I roll it and I have this big long pins and I just pin it all the way through my first roll into the second one. So now this is all stay in here on the top without dragging in a table and this is how it's look like from the back you can see the um, can you see those pins actually go through in here I don't know if you can see or not I'm closing light right now so this is how it looks like for now and I'm gonna try to see 
if on a smaller canvas more comfortable or not so I'm gonna thread my needle right now because I already ran out of my first thread and I will try it it's Wednesday of March 4th and I did not have time to stitch together with you anymore yesterday but it was just like chaotic from one to another or went to pick up my little girl from school my son come back then this or that wants to eat that one needs something and I just like didn't have a peaceful time for recording video so I think right now I'm gonna stop this video because I would love to post this video today on Wednesday and I just want to show you how much I did so far what do you think about my stitches so I have in here a few of the different kind of stitches so all this green I don't know if this light would be better just a minute not sure um, all this green in one thread this uh, kind of like a brownish yellow in two threads together so they they're not like big puffy stitches you see that and this one is more kind of free you can see the black behind them this one like the full coverage would do now what I see in here on my design so right now I'm in here somewhere that I did and I did this triangles and those brown it's this pieces in here now this one next to my symbol it's the same color as this one you see in here this is triangle number nine and then if I want to do next one it's again number nine in two threads so I will do in two threads again same color go between in here right so it's going to be kind of hard a little bit to see because same color and then last piece of thread they will create a cross will be number eight that's a little bit different green so that's what I'm gonna try to stitch but first I think by myself I will, st I will finish stitch of this triangle here because that's what left for me right now and I will do as as you know um, they tell you to do half stitch another half stitch with different color on the blends I will do the whole leaf in here and I will see if I like it or not to continue with the rest of the pattern um, so yeah but I do like the way I created on a small frame and I just like you know just put them here so if you want to keep on your lap you, you have a flat bottom if this is not on your way also I use a very like a much smaller clip to here to clip my pattern into the fabric so it's not sliding away um, yeah so I'm gonna continue I hope you like this video uh, I, I hope you like my tips about this if you don't have a frame like I and maybe frame picture will help you and now the big one frame that I have I will see later if they uh, will fit my bigger canvas that I have from Reolis too. Yeah, the big one like a um, springtime I call it. Alright, I will say goodbye for now and I will see you next time. My next video should be a diamond painting.